Hey everyone, Andrew here, and in this video I'm going to explain the differences between Laravel Sanctum and Passport. Both of these are first-party authentication packages created by the Laravel team, and both serve similar purposes, which is why it can be confusing when seeing either of them tossed around when looking up authentication for your application. If I could boil it down to a TLDR, it would be this. If you need a full OAuth2 authentication workflow in your Laravel app, use Passport. But for pretty much any other use case, go with Sanctum. If you'd like to learn more, keep watching. First, let's talk about the similarities. Both allow you to create authentication tokens that external applications can use. These are both bearer tokens though, and need to be used with an appropriate authorization heading. So if we have this example Axios get request here, and we pass in a headers object, we need to use an authorization heading with bearer, and then whatever the API token value is here. And this is used with both Sanctum and Passport. Tokens in both Passport and Sanctum can also be used to easily retrieve user data in your Laravel API. So we have that API user me route from earlier. And if we pass in the request object from Laravel, the request user method, it will return the user model associated with that authentication token. Both packages also allow you to use middleware to guard against unauthenticated users, but their implementation is slightly different, and I'll talk more about that later. And finally, both also allow you to assign abilities or scopes to tokens, allowing you to organize your users into different groups. Again though, this differs a bit between the two packages. So here in Laravel Sanctum, we have our user, and we can return user create token, passing in the name of it. We'll just call it user token, and then an array of ability names. We can do like views, users, edits, posts, and then return back that plain text token. So we end up with a token that when used has these two abilities attached to it. Now the user itself, just the single token that was created. And if we open up a passport application, we can use very similar methods to do the same thing. Return user, create token, user token, and then an array of scopes this time, views users, edits posts. And then like before, we'll return back a plain text token, and that is the access token property on the object. Two things to note though. One is that using this line here, bypasses the whole OAuth2 workflow and allows us to create what are called personal access tokens for this particular user. And two is unlike Sanctum, we have to pre-register the scopes with Passport. And in order to do that, we open up our auth service provider file and scroll down to the boot method here. Then we can say Passport, tokens can, and this expects an array where the keys are the scope names that we had added in earlier. So we have views users and edits posts. And the values for these are kind of just general descriptions telling the user what the scopes do. So something like that. So that's about where the similarities stop. Let's talk about the differences. Whereas Passport can only authenticate users via generated authentication tokens, Sanctum can also use Laravel's built-in cookie session authentication for an even easier option. This is usually used for single-page JavaScript applications, and there's a requirement that both your Laravel API and front-end application share the same top-level domain name. So for example, myapp.com and api.myapp.com would work. So would myapp.com and myapp.com slash API, but myapp.com and myappapi.com would not. In order to use this, first we have to go to the kernel class of our application, and then in our middleware here, we just uncomment out this ensure frontend requests are stateful class in the API middleware group. Now if we go to our script or wherever else you would be using this authentication, the first thing that we have to do is call a get request to sanctum csrf cookie. This initial request sets up some csrf protection. And then afterwards, we can perform the actual login to our application. So we would do like Axios post slash login, 
provide it with our credentials, and then continue on with the rest of our application. The neat thing about this though, is that let's say in another file, we make an Axios get request to our example guarded route from earlier, the API user me route, we don't have to provide it a token headers or anything like that. Laravel Sanctum automatically injects the cookies that were set after logging in and uses those to determine who the authenticated user is. Again though, provided that your application is on the same top level domain name. Now speaking of this route, I briefly talked about the fact that both can use middleware to guard routes. Now in Passport, you can use the main auth API guard, but you'll have to change the driver to Passport. So opening up the config auth file, if we scroll down, we should add a new guard called API that has a driver of Passport and a provider of users. For Sanctum, a new guard is added for you, auth Sanctum, that you can use in your middleware. This also protects against both token-based authentication or the SPA cookie-based one that I just showed off. Sanctum tokens also never expire by default. So the one that we had created here will be valid forever unless we manually revoke it by calling user tokens delete. Now this will delete all of the tokens associated with that particular user, but if you want to delete just the one that was used for a current authentication, we can say, all right, request user current access token delete. So then the token that was used to authenticate this particular route at a certain point in time will be the one that was deleted. Passports tokens, on the other hand, do expire by default, but the default values are pretty lengthy. And we can change this by going to our application's auth service provider and down in the boot method, we can use one of three methods to change this. And you don't have to add all three of these in at the same time. You can just add one to your application if it's applicable. Probably the biggest difference between the two though is that Passport provides an OAuth 2 implementation and Sanctum does not. Using this, a second application can request authorization from your Laravel API, specifying the exact scopes and privileges that will be granted to the consuming app. Your user then enters in their credentials, approving these scopes, and the token generation continues as normal. The consuming application is usually required to be registered with the API that Passport's installed on, and a client needs to be created, which provides both a key and a secret to be used in the transaction. But now, our front-end app can request data associated with our authenticated user. Alright, I think that's about it for this video. I hope this enlightened you a bit about the differences between Laravel Passport and Sanctum. More than likely, most of the time reaching for Sanctum will probably be your best bet for a speedy authentication library. Don't be afraid to reach for Passport though, if you even think you'll be using OAuth 2 sometime later down the road. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other web development topics, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or on my Twitter linked below. Thanks for watching.